Hello, everyone. Welcome in. I'm going to let everybody get joined in, and then we'll get started. see um, do me a favor just share this to if uh, share this to your to your timeline see if we get some people the Lord's telling me to share um, so um, maybe that'll entice or encourage someone to to join us that maybe wouldn't join us and I'm gonna try to speak not of my own but what the Lord wants me to say so um, we're going to have uh, a few minutes to, uh, I'm going to play a song here in a minute to get us started. And I'm going to read a devotional. And then I want to talk about truth. The truth hurts. But does it have to? Um, a lot of times we misconceive the truth. The father of all lies twists the truth just enough to make it not the truth. <laughs> so we're going to talk about who the truth is and why it's important to know him and to also um, for him to know you. Um, so I hope everybody's doing well. I'll start with prayer and then we'll get started. I'm going to pray for the two people I see right now on here and any more that join, Stephanie and, and uh, Jeremy. Lord, right now, um, thank you for this evening. Thank you for giving me the ability to share your word, to do your work, Lord. It's a true honor. Often I overlook and take it for granted, Lord. And there's no more better, I don't know if that's a word. You're not the grammar police, sorry, Lord. But uh, you... And your work is the most important work of all. And to be chosen and called to do your work is an honor. So Lord, recenter me into any uh, pridefulness, any uh, thing that is not a view that makes me feel like I have the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Because Lord, you are the truth. And I can't have you. But you can have me. You can have all of me. And in you, therefore, I am in the truth, Lord. I'm walking with you daily. Lord, I want to pray for Stephanie right now. I love um, that she is connected here. Um, she is a supporter of, of your work in our ministry, Lord. And she's taking part in, in bettering her relationship with you and also with others on this earth so she can display your hands and feet and she can be the love that you call us to share. So thank you for Stephanie, Lord, and I pray that anybody that she knows, anybody that knows her, will come to see the Lord, come to see you in your fullness and start to seek your face, Lord. It's hard sometimes, this world, it's like, Everybody is worried and everybody is anxious and everybody is depressed because we're wanting something in this world that we can only find in you. And Lord, you are our only help we know. When you become that one source, Lord, it leads us away from all the things that the world may give us, the short fixes or temporary what have it, the self-improvement, Lord. It leads us to you, the true doctor. <laughs> but see, first, Lord, we have to, to admit that we are sick ourselves. Only the sick need a doctor. Lord, right now, I want to pray right now that anybody is watching this, including um, who may watch it, the loved ones of those, Lord, I just pray that you soften our heart and give us ears to hear and, 
and um, eyes to see, Lord, what you're revealing to each and every one of us. And I just pray, Lord, that we can see our true identity in you. Lord, we, let us all admit we have a sickness. Lord, allow us to have the courage. Give us the courage that we need to seek you and you only, Lord. Because you are the true healer. You are Lord Almighty. It's so hard sometimes to remember that and not speak for myself, Lord. So remind me right now of your sovereignty. Lord, I also want to pray right now for Jeremy. I know his mother is ill and sick, I believe. And I love this young man. Um, I've encountered him uh, numerous times. And I know his heart is yours, Lord. And I pray that anything that's in him that isn't of you, I, I tell it to flee, to loosen that, Lord. Loosen all those things that are, that are, that are, are working against him and you. Lord, you are almighty. Lord, we just have to give it to you. Remind us to stop going back to get what we left at your feet. I say that for myself more than any. Lord, you go before us. You already know. You walk with us. And you have paid for our past. There's no area that you haven't gone and haven't prepared for us. So, Lord, give us the courage to walk in that. Also, I want to pray for my brother Chris that's on here, Lord. Chris has been a true blessing to me. He has spoken and, and, and spoken love and truth. His spirit is huge, Lord. His spirit is magnified in you and all that you do. Chris is a blessing, not only to myself, but those that he encounters. Lord, I'll, I'm quick to say, and he is too, that it is all from you. And Lord, Chris has been through hell and back. I've been through that as well, Lord, but you have redeemed me each time. And I'm so thankful for that, and I'm thankful for what you've done in Chris's life giving me a brother that is closer than a friend, a friend that's closer than a brother. Either way, he is both of those things for me, Lord. So I pray for anything that is bothering him or binding him, Lord, let it be gone. In Jesus' name, right now, flee. Flee depression, flee mental things, flee all... <laughs> tactics of the enemy, Lord. And let us find you. Often we come in this world, we think we need something. We need more. We need more. We need more. But actually, when you created us, you created us in our your image, Lord. And we don't need anything that you have not given us. So, Lord, give us the, the, the courage to to, to lay down all the things that are not of you, to shed all those things so that we can truly be pure in you. Lord, I pray for anybody else that needs a word of hope. I hope they join. I hope they seek your face, not mine. But I just hope they know they can come here anytime and, and be in peace, Lord. Your peace surpasses all understanding. God and direct my words. It's in your son's name. I pray, Amen. And I did see you, Gina. Gina, you are God. You already know Gina. She's awesome. She works out. She does so many things. She puts up with me. Thank you. And bless her. All right. So uh, I want to play this. Uh, I was talking the other night with some people, and uh, we were talking about hymns and. I was like, Stephen sings hymns, and I want to play one that just came to me and uh, and see what you think about it. I would just sit here right now 
I know this world of Mondays are crazy. The world is hectic. We have our own issues. We have the issues of others. So Lord, just let us focus in on you. Turn our eyes onto you for this four to five minutes so we can see your face and you can see ours and we can know <laughs> that you are good. Amen. Enjoy. Please work. <laughs> This is, a, I'm going to just go on into another one. It's my next favorite, Amazing Grace, and it's all about sin. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but enjoy. Hey 
to feel and grace my fears really need now precious deep that grace of peace the Just toys and snares we have Yeah, keep it going. <laughs> we don't need any of this. Oh, that's so good. These songs give us chills. Yes, Jeremy. Um, that's got their spirit filled. The spirit rides on waves of sound. It, it rides on your tone. It's why you talk to people and spirit speaks to spirit. And maybe that spirit is dormant, but it awakens you. That spirit in another then you're having conversation, whether it be you interact or whatever, a spirit speaks to it and it awakens that. That's when you're around people that are spirit-filled, that's why you feel that. That's why it gives you chills. And I hope you're shaking. I hope that it has that impact. Because so many people, look, we all like different music. I get it. Some don't like this. That's okay. No harm to me, no foul, no judgment. But as for me and my home, as for me and my heart, that music has forever changed my life. And um, I love to share it. So it's on Spotify, it's on YouTube. I'll share the links when I get off here. And uh, turn our eyes to see his face. And... Just the other day, I was telling someone, we are all born spiritually blind. And a lot of us don't want to see that, <laughs> literally. But the Lord is always, I love how he heals the blind, the blind man. He can't see. Lord heals him, and now he sees. It's symbolic for us as well when we give our heart 
sorry. When we give our life to Jesus, see, you're dying to self because at heart, we're not asking Jesus into this heart. This is one of the biggest things I believe that really can lead people astray. Good, but can lead it astray is when we ask Jesus into our heart. And why so many people don't feel different. They don't feel that spirit come when they say that, when they accept Jesus into their heart. It's the difference is Ezekiel says that I will remove the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will give you a heart that isn't hard hearted. It isn't cold. It isn't guarded and and just steel. But it's one that beats. It's one that people can hear. People can see through your actions, through the way you treat others, through your relationship with Jesus. So maybe that's you. Maybe that's half the world or more. And that's why when we talk spirit, they are like, I don't know that thing. <laughs> Join the club. I didn't either. Because every time I sing about Amazing Grace, I was like, Grace is going to be my girlfriend. You know, in the hymn, in the pews. Uh, whoever this Grace is, she is amazing. And she's going to be mine. But I didn't ever see her. I never found her. She never came to church. Just didn't know where she was. It's because he says my grace is sufficient. Often when we live... Uh, of uh, a life that is regulated by rules, by uh, not a relationship, but by rules. But see, Christ came to set us free, and free we are. But rules make it about you. Did I follow this rule? Don't, I'm not, I'm not speaking like, yes, there's rules, there's man-made rules, and there's, there's, there's things, but that's a temporary Band-Aid. You throw that Band-Aid on that heart, you still got the same heart. There's no life in it. So therefore, the, your desires don't change. You don't change. The people around you don't see a change. Maybe they do at the very beginning because you're convinced this is this is it, you know? And it's like, uh, I feel like the same person. He said, I will create a new heart in you. I will create a new creation. And when you take your heart out and give it to Jesus and he gives you this stone or this heart of flesh, my friends, that comes with the spirit. And see, why you can't see is because you haven't received that. See, it says the pure heart will see God. The pure heart will see God. <laughs> Pure heart means one that's not devoted to anything but one thing. I don't want to talk about that. What's the root of your issues? We can blame, we can accuse. There'll always be someone at work or in our life that we can't stand that drives us crazy. I get it. Been there, done that. But I'm asking you, what is it? Is it alive? Or have you grown stagnant? Um, I'm not going to go into the devotional. Maybe I should. Both of them are for Charles Stanley, so I will. Uh, take the gospel to the world, because I believe this is so important. When a teacher gives an assignment, responsible students take it seriously. They do, do what's required, give their best effort, and complete the work in a timely manner. Before ascending to heaven, Jesus gave us commandment, an e assignment really. But many Christians are half-hearted about completing the task, meaning their heart isn't devoted, it's divided to many things. It's not devoted to one thing. But many Christians are half-hearted about completing the task. Christ told his followers to share the good news about salvation and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey his commandments. Some believers dedicate themselves to this work, but others are either too busy or too timid to commit in this way. The scope of this assignment is global to all nations, but 
that doesn't mean everyone should move to another country. Some believers are called by God to go far from home, but others are called to minister right where they are. The mission field is all around us, in our homes, workplaces, schools, and neighborhoods. As Christ followers, we have the Holy Spirit residing within us, which means we have his power to fulfill this command. We can't save anyone, but it's our responsibility to tell people about the God who can. How will they believe unless they hear? Romans 10, 14. I shared this, I need to get the exact verse, but um, from what I understand, there was this blind man, <laughs> blind man, okay? I believe this is it, what I was talking about. Get this, get this, get this. He could not see Jesus. He could not hear Jesus distinctly. He didn't know the voice of Jesus. He didn't know what Jesus looked like because he was blind. Jesus could have been walking right in front of him and he wouldn't have known. But see, there were people around him that said, look, there is Jesus. Therefore, that blind man was able to, to call out the, the, the name of Jesus. He was able to call out to Jesus and he was able to ask for him to heal him. That has forever changed my view on ministry. It's not a lot of times that we have this sudden thing. It's it's not that these people meet me and they change their, change their life. No, sir, like... No, but we are vessels of God, Jesus, his spirit. Where your spirit is filled, when you walk into a room, no matter the surroundings, the spirit of the Lord is there. And when the spirit of the Lord is there, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. That means there's no prisoner or bondage where there is the Spirit. I was sharing with good brothers and sisters the other night, and I said this. I said, uh, I feel called to go where other ministers are not going or will not go or think they shouldn't go. But every time I think about it, Jesus was always eaten with the sinners. He was always with the sick and the poor. He was always there for the ones who knew they needed a doctor. And to me, he didn't give me the spirit to sit, to share uh, uh, some instruction and go about my life but he's always filling me with whatever it needs to do his accomplishments, to do his task. He'll do the same for you. He'll teach you. He'll, he'll mold your heart. He'll renew your mind. He'll give you a certain set of eyes that allow you to see Jesus, even if it means you have to go into the dark. That light shines through darkness. And that's where the people are that need a doctor. They're lost. They're walking into walls. They're tripping over each other. But you know why? If you ask them, they truly want to be free. They truly want to live life to its fullest, but they don't know how. And that's why Jesus said, if you have this story, if I have transformed you, it's no longer I, but Christ in me, how can, you, how can Jesus not share Jesus? How can, how can the Spirit not share the Spirit? It is not yours. It's been given to you for you to use. And when you don't use something like a muscle or anything for a while, that muscle is lost. When you don't do something for a while, it takes a while to get that back. And sometimes you don't. So, maybe you're not a street preacher. Fair enough. But 
if you have received that spirit, that is the one that goes before us. It will intercede on your behalf. It will lead you where you need to go, where God says, hey, I'm taking you. It's not where you have to wake up and try to put yourself somewhere so he can, you can be used. It's like, no, I will bring you in contact. All I need you to do is have your eyes open, your ears open. And eventually, if my spirit says to have your mouth open. So, I hope that encourages you. It's tired. I'm tired of the church preaching to the church. Quit preaching to the church. <laughs> I mean, that's good. We have that. We're we're to edify. We're to to refine, and we are to encourage and build up one another. But hey. There comes a time where, hey, you need to share outside of this. You need to share with your brother and sister that you care about. You know, it may not be being the crazy guy that has to have a Bible everywhere he goes or or, or uh, doing these things for Jesus, you know. That's good. But be, be what God created you to be. And you know how you get to do that is you are in Christ. And it goes with you. It flows. I'll be honest. There will be times where I'm like, I'm not going in here. I'm not saying anything about my faith or whatever. And uh, something said or whatever. I don't really bring that up. But there's something in my voice that I don't know. A lot of times I get resistance from the enemy. People, I don't even have to say a word or anything. They grow resistant towards me they flee but yes right now chris like you said it's time to step out and step up it's time to keep being quit being silent for what god has done in your life and some of you are like i don't know what he's done so right now lord if there's anybody right now not aware of what you're doing in them lord I pray that you bring that revelation to them. If they have not received your spirit, Lord, let them ask, give their life to you. Truly die to self. Give that cold heart to you and receive your heart of flesh, one that is not devoted to anything but you and one that is able to fulfill your mission. We need a bunch of spirit-filled, transformed followers spreading your word. So give us the courage to do so. Amen. Okay, I got totally off. Um, <laughs> good devotional. I guess I could end there, but uh, I wanted to share Dr. Stanley's... Uh, I started at 6.30, so I got 23 minutes. Okay? If, uh, if you'll bear with me, I'll make it quick. But this is a good word. Because often I hear people, I want to know the truth. Tell me the truth. Show me the truth. Well, uh, I think this is the truth. Well, how are you going to point to the truth or share the truth if you don't know the truth? And I'm not saying the truth according to your grandparents or your best friends or, or everybody that you hate. You just go opposite of them. But I'm talking the truth that the Lord is giving to us once we receive him. He is the truth, the word, the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. So if you're going any other way, it's the wrong way. <laughs> the gate is narrow. Many will not find it. But hey, when you find it, celebrate. 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 Don't, don't keep it a secret. Let the Lord use the glory from his redemption. Okay. Dr. Stanley says, uh, he sends a letter out monthly, and this is for March. He says, after I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I really wanted to know what the Bible said about the issues I was facing, but I didn't know where to look. Then I discovered a treasure in the back of my mom's big Bible. It was a section with various subjects printed in bold letters. 
Underneath the headings was a list of verses that addressed each topic. I copied the list and I go back to the room to read through them. I didn't know at this time that it was called a concordance. I was just happy I could find the truth I was looking for. Are you interested in the truth? We all like accurate information when it comes to political, medical, financial issues. But what about spiritual truth? Do you want to know what God says about himself, you and the world around you? Or are you uninterested or too busy to find out? That's a serious question. You can be busy. <laughs> So oh, it's just preaching all over me. But I have found lately that I, just during those two songs, I had to force myself to sit here and just be and listen. I wanted to look here or grab this or do whatever. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 4610. When's the last time you've been still? When's the last time that you are still or been still or are being still? Or is this world too crazy? Well, it is. But there's one that has overcome this world. It says, take heart, for I've overcome this world. And in me, you have as well. I will give you peace. Not the peace of this world, but the peace that surpasses all understanding. One that is from the Prince of Peace himself. Truly live on that. Okay, moving on. Many people today are content to live with half-truths, mm. which are really lies. I'll give you 99.9% .9 of the truth, but I'll give you, there's a point zero 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 one percent that is false. So, this goes two ways. I had a conversation. It's good to fellowship with fellow brothers and sisters. But I was talking with Chris about how we have created a culture that is counseling, canceling someone and calling others false prophets or non-Christians or fake Christians or whatever. I'm not calling you that. I honestly have never, I don't think since I've truly been transformed, I've ever said this person isn't a Christian. Sometimes I feel like maybe the Christian isn't the question. Are you a follower of Christ? Are you taking up your cross daily? Are you walking in step with him? Just a little behind, but close enough to always be with him. There is an enemy that comes still to comes. There is an enemy that comes to steal, kill, and destroy, divide, destruct. Any of the D words bring despair, divorce. You know, Diablos is devils in Greek, and it means to throw apart. His word, his name is to throw it apart. Guess what he's doing? You know, what's the opposite of that is unity, community, unity in the body of Christ. He says, hey, if you're for, if they're for me, then they're for me. But if you are not for me, you're against me. There's no in between. Many people are content to live half-truths, which are really lies. It's even happens to faithful churchgoers. They listen to sermons week and week, week after week, but the messages never sink into their hearts or affect their behavior. The Apostle James said the kind, this kind of person is a hearer of the word, but not a doer. He's like a man who looks in the mirror and quickly forgets what he's seen. James 1, 22 through 24. I love that hymn. I want to see your face. We will be face to face with the Lord one day for final. <laughs> but you can seek his face every day. Let me see your face on the person I despise the most, Lord. 
person I can't see Christ in, help me to see it. Because you are in all. We all find our being in you. You hold all things together. And ultimately, by me saying that brother or sister can never truly follow you or be converted or transformed, I am throwing out what I graciously needed the most is mercy and grace. See, that's the thing about grace. It just seems too good to be true. But that's the truth. That's where you find it. It's too good to be true. Not technically. Not if you know who's given it and not if you haven't received it. If you receive the grace and you truly, when no one cared, everyone threw you out, no one picked you, everyone hated you, everyone was kicking you, everybody was judging you, nobody wanted you, all you could do was sit in the dark and just cry and cry and cry and just wish it was something. I don't want, you know, just horrible. There's this hand that reaches down for you because I've been in that place. I mean, he says, I love you. My child, get up. My light is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. I will show you my way. It doesn't matter what they say about you. Do you trust me? Do you trust to hold that hand? Are you, are you faithful enough to hold your hand up and say, I know Jesus will find my hand and pull me out of this? Yeah, Jeff, yeah. Okay, quit getting dry. Uh, today we need believers who don't just hear the truth, but build it into their lives so it, it permanently, permeates everything they think and do. When Jesus prayed for us in John 17, 17, he said, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. When God sanctifies us, he sets us apart to walk in his way and his will. This process is directly connected to the Bible. One of the best helps we have in living in a godly manner is knowing and applying the truth of scripture. Our whole being is involved. With our minds, we learn truth. With our hearts, we, we love it. And with our wills, we live it out in everyday life. Before we dig into how to build truth into our lives, let us consider why it's necessary. Truth is God's protection. Our society is rampant with deceptions because the world system is ruled by Satan, who, by the way, is a liar, the father of all lies. John 8, 44. But we don't have to fall for his falsehoods because we have the truth of God's word to refute and overcome his schemes. You also have the spirit of the truth. It allows you to see through the surface. It allows you to see through and say, hey, that's an angel of darkness disguised as an angel of light. But we don't have to fall for his falsehoods because we have the truth to refute and overcome his schemes. When we're grounded in the scripture, we are able to avoid his traps. Truth is also God's provision. I love that word, provision. He has professional vision. He sees all. He sees through all. He knows all. But he is showing his vision is like no other. And guess what? When you receive that new heart, when you truly have the heart of Christ, you have a, eyes to see. He gives you your his eyes. You can't see the world different no more. When doubts and anxieties come, you set your mind on God's promises. They anchor your soul for difficulties comfort you in sorrows and give you courage to face the challenges of life. But when you don't know truth, you'll be tossed around like the waves of the sea. Ephesians 4, 13 through 15. Now that you see why building truth into your life is so important, you can take the first step. Ask the Lord to give you the desire to know his truth. 
you can be certain that this is exactly what God wants to do. So this request is a prayer he will answer, 1 John 5, 14 through 15. If, if we request according to his will, we will receive it. It's not if, it's will. But be aware that building truth into your life is not going to be a quick fix. It's like any construction project. It takes time and consistency. You're also going to get crucified by this world. There was a man that lived perfectly. He loved the sick. He healed the sick. He did everything. But this world that is run by lies and false schemes, they killed him. Now, this was the greatest man to ever live, best teacher to ever live. He was crucified. And guess what? When you say, hey, I'm a follower of Christ, it's no longer I, but Christ in me, guess what's going to happen to you? But here's the good news coming up to Easter. No grave has its hold on you. Nothing that is dead cannot be brought to life by Christ and redeemed. Okay. Next, we need to put that desire into action by seeking truth. The easiest way I've found to begin the search is to identify a point of need in your life. Do you have a point of need? This is tough. Just like I've said before, someone asked me, what do you need? I can't imagine the Lord, like it would scare me. And this is kind of being real. If the Lord's right here and he said, look me now and said, Jay, what do you need? We should start our day with that. When we go to him in prayer, okay? He's talking back to us. He's there. Let me hear I already know what you need, but let me hear you say it. Let's bring it to light. It could be overcoming sin, needing to help with a relational issue, or some other practical matter. This is where the concordance I talked about earlier comes in handy. Let's say you are struggling to forgive someone. Look up that topic, read that scripture's passages on that subject. What does the Bible say about God's forgiveness of you and your responsibility to forgive others? Ephesians 4.32 Truth can be painful. Truth can be painful, but it's always cleansing. Now it's time to apply what you learn. Remember, you're building truth into your mind, but it doesn't stop there. For what you learn is meant to influence how you think. What do you do and how you feel? For example, knowing that you have no right to hang on to a wrong done to you should prompt you to stop rehearsing the offense in your mind and nursing um sorry and nursing the hurt in your emotions let go let go let go you know the ultimate blueprint of that is Jesus himself when they were killing him they're spitting on him. They were mocking him. He said, forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they do. He didn't go, hey, that's that's so-and-so, and that's so-and-so. Father, you got them, right? Okay? I want you to get redemption on them. He said, the Father, forgive them. When's the last time you said that to someone that you couldn't forgive? And see, here's the deal is you can't forgive them. All true forgiveness comes from the Lord Christ himself, the one that was the ultimate forgiver. If anybody has something to say or to complain about being mistreated unfairly because literally he lived perfectly, it's the Savior, Jesus. So when I have petty stuff that I want to hold over people's head, ultimately it's like drinking poison. Or I could say, Father, forgive them. I don't go to their face and say that, really. I don't even know if they heard that. But he, he knew the Father would hear every word he said. And he said, Father, forgive them. 
for they know not what they do. Whew. That's forgiveness. So if you're trying to forgive, you can't do it. It's the problem is you. See, you need no longer I, but Christ in you. Christ will allow you to forgive because you know what? He's the ultimate forgiver. Okay. Um, for example, knowing that you have no right to hang on to a wrong done to you should prompt you to stop rehearsing the offense in your mind and nursing the hurt. Instead, keep releasing it to the Lord until it no longer has a hold on you. Finally, continue building one block of truth on another. Your pursuit shouldn't stop with the needs in your life. Keep reading through the Bible to build a foundation, foundational knowledge of God and his ways. This book is inexhaustible. It's living. It's true. When you find one nugget of truth, you'll long for more. Until God's word becomes a great delight rather than a burdensome, burdensome duty. Psalm 19, 7 through 14. The rewards of building truth into your life are worth any sacrifice you may have to give or make. Sorry. You'll develop a firm trust in the Lord that grounds you in every situation. And you'll gain spiritual discernment to see when something doesn't quite line up to the word. There's no better way to spend your time than building the truth of Scripture into your life for your protection, your provision, and an awesome reward. You want to become like him, that is our ultimate goal, then you have to know about him. You have to study him. Some of us don't even know what the Lord Jesus did on this earth, how he treated, how he served, how he loved. But I'm a follower of Christ, okay? So how is that? You're gonna go to church? To find him? Okay, that's fair. But often it was... He didn't spend much time there. Because they already had it figured out for what they thought. They had all the rules. See, probably with Jesus, he was breaking them. <laughs> they wanted to kill him. He was turning tables over in the synagogues. Really, his anger was always at the ones who thought they were right. And they had, they had all the answers. So I hope that touched you about the truth be told. It's hard. It's difficult. But it's worth it. Do you have the whole truth? Nothing but the truth? So help you God? Well, in God you do. But he also had the grace and mercy in his teaching you the ways. Stop gathering around and watching stuff with others, your family, just to, to kill time. There will come a day. The days are short when there won't be time. And that's all I got to say. <laughs> I feel like Forrest on the bench. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, so a few announcements where everybody goes and we'll pray out. If you have a prayer request, put that in here, please. Um, but I want to share with you, starting Tuesday night, we start a new series in our Bible study. It's over Easter. Um, and look, I get it. Many people, like, I don't want to talk about Easter. I don't want to talk, you know, it's pagan, it's whatever. Can we just stop? Maybe it is. You know, anything of this world is pagan, whatever you want to call it. But see, the Lord, he died on the cross. He was buried, and he rose three days later. That is Easter. I don't care what you call it. And what a thing to celebrate because, see, we also get to do the same. I get it. I'm not a big Easter bunny guy. <laughs> Candy, I like it. Good Friday makes me want to just cry all day. 
because I think about nothing but what he went through and endured on the sake of me. But not just for me, but you as well. And then Sunday we celebrate because he is no longer there. <laughs> he is gone, right? He has risen. What a what a what a story. Um, anyway, so we're going through that. It's a five week series. Um, we gather. It's free. You come and join. You don't have to know anything about Easter. If you go through the class, you don't know anything about Easter, but you find something out about Jesus. That's well worth everything. And maybe you find some brothers and sisters that you have community with that are building you up, that are edifying you, that are cheering you on to do the Lord's will, not tearing you down. I shared this with a student, two students, a lot of students. I said, you ever watched a bucket of crabs? They're like, <laughs> Coach Spurl, like, what are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, I don't really, I don't think I've ever watched a bucket of crabs either. But forget that, okay? There's a bucket of crabs, okay? There's a big five-gallon bucket, okay? And there's about three-fourths full. And if you watch them long enough, a lot of times those crabs, they start climbing out of that bucket, because it's the ultimate freedom. But see what happens when they get towards the top. What happens? The others, one of the others grabs onto it. And brings it back down. We're all in a crab bucket. <laughs> Visualize that. And they don't do it because they know. It's because they don't know. So you need, when you're going through this, God will put people in your life and surround you that will pray for you, that will uh, intercede on your behalf, that will lead you and help you, encourage you. And it may just be enough to get out of that bucket. Don't mean you don't have to come back and try to get those that didn't make it out. But now you're out yourself. You've been set free. And now that you're free, you can help set others free. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. So, I don't know why I get off on tangents. Forgive me. Are you being pulled down? Yeah, Bobby Joe, I can't stand her. Okay. I asked a question. I didn't ask who. I said, are you being pulled down? Yes. Does it matter who? Not really, no. So stop giving power to them. Stop blaming them. Stop accusing them. Yes, they're holding on to you, but you know what? You have a strength in the Lord if you call upon him. Nothing can hold you. <laughs> Not even the grave can hold you, right? And that's what you need to do. And then you go back. And you help and you go take the gospel to the world. The gospel, the true meaning of it, root word means good news. Good news. Often when I went to church early on, it was like bad news. Like, what did you do this week? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I ain't saying. Oh, it was great. It was good. I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> good. You understand what? Truly the gospel, I see I got kicked off. Truly the gospel means freedom. It's good news to those who need grace, that need forgiveness and need mercy. And it's like, hey, guess what happened to me this week? Guess what the Lord did in my life? I was doing this and this and this. I don't know why. For it's because, you know, like I want, I know what I want to do and what I should do, but I do the complete opposite. Okay, Paul, I can relate. Okay. But you know what? Where I'm weak, he's strong. That's the great news. That's good news. So, so 
So build your life on the foundation of truth himself and receive what he has for you. But it starts with us. It starts with us taking the speck, or let's say, taking the log cabin out of our own eye before we say, hey, brother, you got a, you got a log in your eye. Let me get that. No. Do you see the log cabin in yours? What? No. I don't want you touching my eye. I know. I love teaching illustrations, but anyways, I enjoyed it tonight. I hope uh, you are able to join us Tuesday nights. We also have a group on Thursday nights. If you just want to come hang, you can do that. It's over boundaries, and Lord, do we need boundaries. It's good. The Lord gives us the freedom to set boundaries. See, he says we must guard what has been entrusted to us. So it's about setting those safe boundaries. It's having a gate. It's not Fort Knox. It's not the Great Wall of China, but it's just this gate. And you see, you start understanding your gatekeeper is the Lord, and he lets out what is good, or sorry, what is bad, and lets in what is good. But if you leave it to us, we tend to do the complete opposite. So it's all about who's guarding your gate, who's your gatekeeper. I love y'all. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your week. I hope I see you Tuesday. Uh, I'll be putting links on how to do join. It's all free. We'd love for you to do that. Um, share about a friend. If you know a friend that might get something out of that, they're maybe stuck at home and can't go to church or whatever the season is, if they have a phone, they can get on this. And they don't even have to turn their camera on if they don't want. They can just be, listen. Uh, so, may God's peace be yours. And, uh, oh, I need to pray out. If you need to go, you can. Lord, right now, thank you for this time tonight, this evening. Um, for everybody that's here, Lord, to spend an hour with me, with you. Um, I just want to say thank you seems like that is such a lot to ask in this world today, Lord, and I know it is. So I hope they found peace. And Lord, may we dwell in you this week. May we abide in you. And may we continue to, to share the gospel or the good news to the world. And Lord, it may not be in China. It might not be in the Philippines. But we are called to share the truth and the gospel where we're at. How we do that is we apply your word to our life and we go to the mirror and we start seeing that picture change and become more and more like you. That is true transformation. Lord, anybody that is carrying anything burdensome, may they lay it down, Lord. Give them the strength to leave it Lord, thank you for this opportunity for your trust in me to share and to do your work. Lord, it's an honor. Give me strength as well. Not grow weary, but to keep on doing what is good. You finish all things in your timing. Lord, bless this message, whoever watches it, to have their ears open their hearts wide open <laughs> or available let's just say available to receive you and receive a new heart that you give we pray for ukraine we pray for our whole world for peace lord your peace is sovereign over all <laughs> and your peace is like no other so lord may your peace be with us our nation our world and especially with the Ukrainian people. Lord, I pray that you continue to soften the heart of Vladimir Putin. Lord, in him, somewhere deep in there, he's been hurt. He has all the reasons, and he there's no excuse for what he does, Lord. But we know that you're, if anybody can, it will be you that softens his heart and turns his face your way. 
And I pray, Lord, that you have the greatest redemption story ever in this world, and they will all see you in it. You turn what is meant for evil into good, for your glory, for your purpose, for your kingdom. May, um, pray all these things in your name, Lord. Amen. All right. Good night, everyone. May God's peace be yours. Uh, comment if you have anything, or if you have questions or anything, come back to this video. I'll post some links. But reach out, share, and I hope to see you Tuesday night. Love you, Jeremy, Chris, Stephanie, Gina, everybody else that's on here, all the millions across the world. God bless you for tuning in. <laughs> Chris, uh, Bruce, my dogs, whatever. Love y'all. May God's peace be yours. Good night.